Hi everyone, welcome to this talk on fast and precise on the flood patch validation for all. I'm Li Ming Zhang from AUC. This is joint work with my students, Lin Chuan and Yichen. So what is test-driven automatic program pair or APR for short in this talk? So given any bucket program, APR first applies fault localization to compute the probability for every statement to be buggy. And any statements that can be buggy are identified as the candidate statements for patching. So then API will apply different patch generation techniques to create many patches for those statements. So every created patch will be executed against the original test to uh, find the plausible patches, which are the patches that can pass all the original tests. So however, not all the plausible patches are the patches that the developers want. And because of that, API further evolves manual inspection to allow developers to manually inspect and find the final crack patches. In Academia, APR has been you know, studied for over a decade with a recent focus on Java repair. And uh, in industry, companies are also eager to try API techniques due to its promising future. So however, the patch validation process can be quite costly. So let's take a look at the traditional Java patch validation process. Given any patch at the source code level, you need to first compile that into the bytecode level. And then Java Virtual Machine or JVM need to load the patch through the class loaders. And during the execution time, by default, JVM uh, applies Java interpreter to execute the patch. Meanwhile, JVM also maintains the code profiling information and will directly optimize the frequently executed code portions into machine code for faster execution via the JIT compiler. And given this process, step the art capturing like tool can cost over five hours to validate over 9,000 patches for one Apache mass bug. And more recent API tools tend to generate even more patches than capturing and to eliminate the dataset overfitting issue. In this way, they can be even more costly. So to resolve this issue, our insight is that Starting JVM for every patch is costly because we need to load, link, and initialize all the used biological files for every patch. That is over 100 million class loadings for fixing one Google closure bug. And it can be even more costly if the program under repair also involves the deployment of bundles and services and so on. Therefore, we propose to need APR to share JVM across patches on the fly. So in this way, we can share the same JVM instance across as many patches as possible. So in this way, we can minimize loading time because every time we only need to reload the patched bytecode files. While all the other unpatched ones, they are already within the JVM and don't need to be reloaded again. We can also have fast execution because we are going to share the JVM profile information across patches. This can enable more and more code portions to be JIT optimized. And the already JIT optimized code can also be shared across patches. So this is a basic idea. So this is traditional uh, patch validation time, including compilation, loading, and execution. So after on the fly patch validation, we can minimize the loading time which is a green block, and also optimize the execution time, which is a yellow block. In this way, patch validation can be substantially speed up. And this is a basic overflow for our UniAPI work. Given any buggy project, we first apply a repair techniques to create the patches at the source code level. And then we'll perform incremental compilation to compile all those patch files into the patched bytecode files. So, of course, you know, we also support to directly use bytecode level API techniques to directly compute, uh, generate the bytecode patches. So, and right before the patch validation, we first compile all the original source code files into the bytecode level. And then we load all the bytecode files for the original buggy project into the JVM. And during the actual patch execution, so, Every time, we only need to reload the particular patched bytecode files by one patch. And after this patch switching, 
uh, we, we replace, you know, the patch file with the original uh, file and then we move on to reload, to load the patched bytecode file for another patch. So as this process uh, goes on, so we can finally find how all the patch execution result and store that in a database source socket connection. So of course, if you find any plausible patch, we can directly retrieve the original source code level patches by, by you know, getting the original source code level uh, patch file. So this is a basic picture for patch uh, execution on the Valina uh, API, Uni API. So you can see that uh, every patch, they just get executed sequentially one by one showing the same uh, JVM, which is denoted as the uh, orange block here. So it will be okay if every patch accesses its own objects through so read or write operations. However, it will be problematic if one patch write into some global space while later on some patch read from that global space. In this way, earlier patch executions will affect later patch executions. So how do we resolve this issue? There are several technical challenges. So which is how do we monitor all the JVM portion size? How do we force JVM to reset portion size? How do we handle concurrent executions? How do we handle reflection-based accesses? How do we handle potential JDK portions by itself? So there are two basic ways. So first way is to hack the JVM itself. Second way is to perform bytecode level transformation. So we choose the second way just because it's applicable to other stock JVMs and we don't need to modify the JVM itself. This is our basic idea for patch execution on the Uni API with the JVM reset. So right before all the patch executions, we'll have a static analysis phase to identify all the JVM pollution size. And then during the actual patch execution, we'll perform dynamic analysis to monitor and reset all JV JVM pollution size through bytecode transformation. So in this way, so right before every patch execution, we always have a clean JVM state. To evaluate Uni API, so we started three recent source code level API tools, which is uh, uh, ACS, Simfix, and Capgem highlighted in this table. And each of those uh, belong to one particular repair tool category. And uh, we also use the gfs 4 j programs to study the uh, API systems just because they are the most widely used uh, API uh, data set. So this is a recent result for our vanilla UTM PR. So you need vanilla UTM PR uh, without JVM reset substantially speed up patch validation. So for example, for mass bug, caption caused uh, over five hours before, but now only less than half an hour. So this three figures shows the time cost for traditional APR in red and the vanilla union APR in green dashed line. So we can see that the speed up can be up to 300 times. So however, on the fly patch validation can produce imprecise results. Over 5% of the studied patch executions have inconsistent results with vanilla union APR. To resolve this, we further studied in API with the JVM reset, which can incur negligible overhead, but resolve all the precision issue. So for the same mass bug, Uni API with JVM reset not only cost eight seconds more than the vanilla Uni API, so which is only less than 0.5% overhead. And these three figures further show the time cost for Uni API with JVM reset in red and vanilla UNIPR in green dash line. So you can see that the overhead is negligible for all the cases. To conclude, so we have proposed fast and precise on the fly patch validation for all. And we have built a unified on the fly patch validation framework. We have built a public available Melbourne plugin. We have performed the extensive study to show that on the fly patch validation can substantially speed up the other API by up to 300 times. And vanilla on the fly patch validation can incur imprecise patch validation, while Uni API with JVM reset can mitigate such imprecision with a negligible overhead. So that's all for my talk. Thank you for your time.
Hello, we are here in the question and dancewear space with Lingming Zhang that just presented you their work on fast and precise on the fly patch validation for all. And uh, we are uh, waiting for your question to the author in the chat, please, if you have any question, clarification that, or comment even for Ling Ming. Ah, Mike, Michel Pradel, interesting work. Did you consider optimizing the order of patches to validate, for instance, to minimize the amount of close? So, yeah, so Michael, very nice question. So indeed, if we kind of, uh, you know, re re reprioritize the patches so that we can cluster the patches for similar files together, in this way, we can save a bit of, of the uh, class reloading time. So, but for this work, we haven't considered that. So yes, thank you for the question. So by the way, I'd like to point out that uh, our last work on bytecode automated program repair. So in that work, we do like cluster the patches for the same byte profiles together to speed up the execution. Nice. Yeah, I uh, uh, I had also similar uh, comment uh, uh, because uh, as I was saying to you, I, I work on the prioritization, so. Okay, thank you from Michelle. And, thank you. Uh, and Another thing I was interested in while we wait for uh, more question, uh, Ling Ming, is uh, how do you identify the, the site where you have to handle the pollution? You say that you do static analysis. What kind of static analysis do you do? Oh, yeah, that's actually a very, very lightweight static analysis. So basically, in this work, we mainly focus on the static fields because the static fields can be set by you know earlier patches and can affect later patches if they're sharing the same uh, JVM. Yeah. So in this way, basically, so for example, you know, for any uh, static fields that are not final, or which are final, but uh, which uh, you know are not of primitive type, so their values can be muted during the you know patch execution. So we just get all those static fields list, and then during the runtime, we have a special treatment to reset those uh, special fields, to, to, to uh, reset the JVM state to, to, for the uh, clean execution. Thank you for the question. I am interested in this. <laughs> uh, maybe I will contact you later about this. Uh... We can discuss more offline. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, other question? Maybe I can also ask you then my other doubt. Um, uh, what, what is the level of uh, validation of the, pa the patch that you do? You do unit testing for the patch or you, how do you validate? Uh, oh, yeah. That's a very good question. So how do we validate whether the patches are correct or not, yeah. or, or plausible or not, right? So basically we follow the, the previous work so for all the benchmarks we, we, we evaluated with, they are come from, coming from the Defense4j benchmark dataset. And uh, every benchmark will have their own extensive developer test suite that was uh, developed by the developers during the uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, like evolution. So we directly use all the tests from this uh, 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 original dataset. And those, uh, they are mainly unit tests and they are basically based on JUnit, but in you know, many tests, they can touch different places because nowadays there's not a clear dis distinction between unit and integration tests. So we just use all the tests available on those data sets. Okay. So something that I ask author while uh, to way uh, to fill the the space between question is. Uh, what is the next step in which you are working after the, the paper? So there are other uh, development that you're doing on this or other ideas you're working now? Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. So for this work, you know, based on our inspection, we found that static fields are the main reason for a JVM pollution for patch execution, but there can be many, many other re like reasons for, for JVM pollution besides just static fields, right? There could be like file dependencies between the different patches. 
there could be you know you know some like uh, network connections and and some other issues as well. So our next step will consider all those different possibilities to make an even safer on the fly patch validation. That's because now we only reset the static fields. They are not enough for the other data sets. So they are working fine on this data set we are relating with, but might not be generalizable to the other data set, as we also discussed in our stress to validity. That's a very good question. Thank you. Thank you to you. OK, so if there are no other questions, maybe we can just uh, thank you. I don't know. We can wait, uh, but I don't see more questions. So for you, it's uh, very late now to, in, in the evening, right? Oh, no, you are the other side, the opposite. Sorry. Yeah, now it's my so, It's very early in the morning for me. Yeah, OK. So. OK, so Ling Ming, thank you very much for uh, your work, for answering all uh, the questions from me, from the Michelle. And uh, there will still the discussion room button that will appear in case you want to go there and meet with the, the people. They can talk directly with you there. OK, thank you, Antonia. Thank you all for attending this session. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.